I was always told you can't play more than three black players uh, in the same team. There's loads of racial incidents in football as far back as I can remember. You catch the ball like a monkey, monkey chance, you black this, you black that. I think it's time now um, we started dealing with it properly. Under 12's football tournament in Northern Ireland, I got pushed into the crowd. As I've gone into the crowd, black this and black that. Then there was a bit of spitting, swearing, and I went numb for a minute because I was thinking, did I really hear them say that? When I was in Sweden, one of the opposition players called me a nigger. I went to the ref and I told him, oh, this player just called me a nigger. And the referee just told me to get on with the game. To them, it's just a word, it doesn't mean nothing. They don't feel the pain that we feel and um, I was just disappointed if anything. Uh, someone called me a black cunt. I got a bit angry and kicked off a little bit. I was trying to go over to, to see who said it. And then I was, I was pulled away by a couple, of, a couple of guys and then the manager came on and we all, we all walked off and sat inside the changing room. It does affect you for a long while, but I try not to think about things like that. My goalkeeper um, was pelted with stones. He was spat at, and he also had um, half bottles of drink thrown at him as well. Then obviously I heard the racial abuse as well. I made a decision there to defuse the situation uh, for the protection of my own players and what I saw, uh, the fear in my players, and I took my players off the pitch. I kind of felt a bit different playing in a team full of white people uh, at Leighton Orient when I was about 10. It's strange at some, such a young age questioning such a serious topic, but you kind of ask why there's not more people like you playing in the team and things like that. At like the age of 16, I started to encounter some forms of slight racism, not so much in your face, but subtle. But then when I grew up, and then I started to understand what racism was and, you know, those jokes that weren't actually jokes, they were actual digs. Some people call it banter. It's used to cover a lot of things. So, for example, when a player will throw a banana at you and they'll be like, oh, do you want one? You're not wearing shin pads and you're not having boots and you come in with other parents and things like that as like a stereotype for black people and they use them jokes a lot. I've been in a changing room where the lights have gone off. One of the coaches will be like, um, oh, where's he gone? It makes my, my blood boil sometimes. People think like you can just say stuff and everyone's going to take it as a joke because in your head it's a joke. It's not a joke. It's damaging to, to certain people and it can stay with them for a while. Not everyone's confident enough to speak out when they don't actually find it funny because everyone else is finding it funny. They may feel like they're going to be labelled as the bad egg. A racist remark is a racist remark. I was always seen as a, a hothead, an aggressive player. The referees behaved with me a different way than they would to a white player. So I've experienced a lot of times where as soon as I scream or shout or appeal for something, I'm given a caution. But the referee would laugh and treat someone else differently. It was a different colour for me. People of different backgrounds were on the bench. And I know it sounds silly at like a young age, you think, oh, it's just football, blah, blah, blah. They're just not as good as... But like, the people that were on the bench knew that they were better than the people on the pitch, but it was mainly the, the white people that played. It's like, how do you look at someone and just determine like, you know, what, you, what you like, you just look at their skin and you're basically, you've really got a picture on your head. It's, it's stupid. It's stupidity more than anything, man. It's sad because the kind of person I am, I, I like, I base judgment on how the individual is towards me. And I feel that for someone to write me off just because I'm a different colour to them. And I don't think just because of our race that we should have to almost like go into a show and not speak out because you're afraid of repercussions maybe. 
When I witnessed my friends and teammates getting racially abused at football, it was, it was disheartening. It was sad to see. And I don't think, especially as a white person, you don't realise how much it can affect someone. I feel like I've stayed silent because I've had to. Because who, who would want to hear what I've got to say? I've stayed silent because you don't want to be deemed as the busy one in the changing room. Busy is another word that is used to silence you as well. So if you speak out on something, you're deemed as busy. I feel like I haven't said anything maybe because my age, I was a bit younger when things like that were going on and you kind of learn more about life obviously as you grow older. I feel like I've stayed silent because as a white person it's, it's easy to not say anything because like, I'm not getting racially abused myself. I'm not a racist person, so it's easy to just stay quiet, stay out of it, not get involved. But I feel like we have a responsibility of getting involved and saying something because it's important to come from all races, not just black people, white people, everyone. I've been silenced, haven't I really? Because everything which, which has been reported, I've had no feedback. I've taken my team off of the pitch. Um, I've reported incidences, so I haven't stayed silent. To the outside world, it seems I've been silent, but I haven't. I've been a manager for 30 years now, and every time there's been an incident, I've opened my mouth and I've reported it, but I've had no feedback from anybody. I choose to speak now because I believe it's about time that we speak up, because if we don't, it's just gonna keep repeating itself. And I believe that it's up to us who have experienced these things, who have a bit more experience than the younger generation to help them still make their path a lot easier than it was us. For these um, people to be educated, they need, they need to be educated on what they're saying and how it affects people. We all have to come together and just act together, go in the same direction. We can't see change until the people who have power start to you know, pull their finger up and start to actually take action. More managers and more teams like, need to stand up for players that can't speak or are too scared to speak because they feel like they haven't got a voice. Everyone's got a voice, but I feel like the backing of the club, if a club stands behind you and says, yo, whatever you're dealing with, we're going to support you, it will make players feel like, OK, cool, we're united in this. And people like to think that these things don't exist when it's like, this is our reality. And you know what, like enough is enough. I don't want my kids to ever experience what I've gone through. Dad, I'm sad, dad, I'm this, dad, I'm that. No, 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 no. That's why it's time to speak up now. <laughs>